Hello, friends. It's me. And it's time for another story. And a pretty interesting story, if I'm going by just the title, which I usually do, because I don't, I don't usually like to read these in advance. You guys already know that. This is from Reddit user The Homebrew Teller. This is my mother, a kinda leg beard. All right, I, that's the first one for me, so let's just get right into it, shall we? Hello, Moon Horse. Hello, Sango, and the rest of the Moon Herd. You might know me on YouTube as Lanterns Glow and Fox in the Communal Discord. Seriously, everyone, join. We have pie and beard stories. I don't talk enough about the Discord, but you guys should totally join the Discord. It's pretty cool. I, for the most obvious reasons, complained about this here, and I kind of want to get my brains flushed of it now. I'm going to apologize to everyone for formatting my way with words, and the massive amount of salt, and of course, my absolute spaghetti code of grammar and mental processing. I also want to preface this now. If you have an addiction to a substance or know someone who does, please try to seek help. You don't need to drink or smoke to dull whatever pain you're having. I cannot stress enough the trigger warning here, but it features triggers of addiction, alcoholism, and so on. Also, I want to say that even with it being said a dozen times now, I'm proud of Moonhorse for managing to overcome it. That's incredibly sweet. Um, yeah, no, I haven't talked about that very much. Uh, I do get comments where from, I guess some of you guys from my older videos are, are still like, you know, oh, you're you're drunk when you record these and it's like well i haven't been in almost two years actually i don't do that uh i don't really drink that often but yeah it, it was a it was a bad time but i got over that so let's get back to the story to start my mother's always been a caring person and has done her best to try and raise myself and my brother to at least be personable she tried her best time over time, but within the last seven to eight years, she's become slightly more associated with the species of human we call Legus Biroticus, the female of Nick Necus Biroticus. <laughs> you guys are just coming up with different terms all the time. I love it. To be clear, she keeps on top of personal hygiene because work and skin condition that runs in the family, but everything else seems to have suffered. So let's start with how this started. I'm not gonna lie, she started the spiral when my father got sick, really sick, one half in the coffin kind of sick, with late stage renal failure and other issues. Oh god, it's horrible. So this also screwed with my depression and made me become more the recovering beardo that you all know today, but my story comes after this. Uh, yeah. Mom was always a little bit of a drinker, but then in 2015, my dad passed away and she started to slide into the bottle more. Oh, jeez. So sorry to hear all that. I hope you guys are okay. It started as casual shots in the evening, and then earlier and earlier, to the point that almost as soon as she gets home from work, or as soon as she's awake in the morning, on days off, and I guess if she has to buy her more of those on her days off, because she's already drunk by 11. If you guess me, well, I can't give you an award, but you know where I'm going. This is something I've angrily talked about around everyone for a while. It came out of her depression, and it got worse when she had her knee replacement surgeries. Years of standing in places like McDonald's can do that to you. Yeah, it's, it's rough. This has always worried me, now that she's able to drink her way through a gallon of cheap Canadian mist in a single week. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. If not in a few days. It's gotten to the point that she's basically only drinking that and Pepsi out of a cup that really needs to be run through the dishwasher. A nuclear second washer, whatever you need to use to clean a neckbeard's rank-ass dorm room. Yeah, it's pretty gross. All she does now is sit in her room, bareback because I'm a skin condition, watching old DVDs of X-Files and Castle and Bones because mystery dramas, yay. But it gets worse. She doesn't clean at all. Her room is a mountain of clothes, both washed and unwashed. Old wrappers, bandages, her aforementioned cup, pickle jars and pickles, whatever tiny snack crap that she may munch on ever so rarely. If you want her to do dishes, forget about it. 
It only happens in her drunken terms. Bathroom needs to be scrubbed? <laughs> no. Any form of cleaning that isn't related to work, such as the van? Yeah, negative. Take out the trash? Nope. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. Her knees hurt and she's tired and she's likely not sober enough to tolerate the two-minute walk from our door to the bin by the curb. And here's the kicker. She is management at her job. If her supers were to know that this is how the house looked, they'd question how her management skills are. Also, she's kept a... She's kept a toenail that came off. Oh. Oh, that's gross. Yeah, no, okay. Ugh. Looks like we're going deeper. How about we talk about personality? She'll not be able to understand any modern nerdiness, thinks every game looks the same, and barely parses any form of the card games I enjoy, dismisses all tabletop and fantasy-based stuff as card games just because most of them take place at a card shop. She's also technologically illiterate, that I have often nearly gone into a fury over her messing of simple things up in her phone. Keep in mind, she was in her 30s at the start of the whole smartphone era, I get that we weren't the richest then, but damn. On top of that, she'll repeat things constantly and always needs to know where you are if you slip out without saying anything. I'm sorry, maybe I want to leave and be left alone. House felt like a jail before I got my license. Not only that, she doesn't seem to care to try and come out of her shell to try and experience life a little bit more outside of her room. She uses this excuse of wanting to stay home. She's exhausted, she'll miss something, or her back will hurt. Problem is, we don't have cable, so you're not missing anything. It's just DVDs. They won't go out of the window or vanish into some kind of void or something. I want her to engage in hobbies, even if they're just little ones that I like. Get out of the house that doesn't work, at least. It doesn't help that when she's not at home, she acts clueless or lost. She has no concept of savings. Uh, look, another thing that seems to affect me. Or punctuality. Bills will just barely be paid on time. Almost to where we have to come close to having things shut off because she just couldn't foot the bill. This was before myself and my brother got jobs, but still. She also is an unorganized mess. Receipts just tossed haphazardly to the point that you can't tell. New from old, important documents like birth certificates, court documents from legal transactions for dealing with the state of Tennessee and Kentucky over property tax info. Even her debit records are all prone to being lost. Combine this with an unwillingness to try and keep things straight and proper it seems to set off my cleaning and organizing impulses more than when my cat decides the cereal is a fun toy and destroys the bag with everything in it. This is why I've handled the majority of my cat's documents with the vet. She's had a massive crush on Jillian Michaels, fitness instructor, biggest loser. I, I kind of know who that is. I went to college to become a fitness instructor, only to drop out after the first class because it's not what she expected. Did you expect to be training on fat asses like me right out the gate? You don't start with a winning board and a hand. That's not how school works. She went in expecting big things when you have to start small. Those who are in college, you know what I'm talking about. Also, has had a crush on her manager for the longest, and I'm convinced that she's either bi or has been gay the whole time, but conventional Christian logic, her folks are devout, especially grandmother, is man-woman, so that led to me and my brother. Not exactly mad on this point, it just is kind of weird, you know? Ah, uh, sorry, this is rambling and kind of inconsistent. My brain works the same as... <laughs> My brain works the same as Yandere's sim coding does. Enough spaghetti code that if you use it as an example in a college class of how not to do the thing. Oh boy. Um. Okay. First off, uh, I'm gonna say that I'm glad that not only you, but also anybody else who feels the need to come here and kind of like express the things you want to get them out and has no problem with you know this kind of exposure or whatever I appreciate that and I know that talking to people is good and I know that this kind of kickstarts a conversation uh, upon which things have to happen because now it's you know it's out 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 it's like completely out um so yeah I, I, I'm proud of you for trying to get this out and trying to make this, you know, a conversation to be had. Now let's get into the exact thing with, uh, with your mother here. Um, this 
is something that I usually don't get to uh, to go into. Sometimes we touch on this when we talk about neckbeard, legbeard story, stuff like that. But usually, when it comes to identifying the, you know, the beards in process, uh, it's pretty obvious right out the gate that this is, you know, oh, this is neckbeard behavior. This is legbeard behavior, despite age. And a lot of times, you know, as I've said, the younger ones tend to grow out of it, but the older ones tend to stick with it because that's just kind of how they've decided their life is. Um, but I want to say this is a rare case because that... That's not a leg beard. That is an incredible amount of depression. Um, that's a lot. And... Trust me, I, I, I know it well. Um, this is someone who is not dealing with changes uh, in their life well at all. And I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that the uh, a relationship between her and your dad was a good one. Um I don't know that, but I'm going to assume just because of the way that you were kind of talking about it. Uh, That sounds like it hit her in a way that she was not uh, prepared for. And, I mean, who can be, really? You know? Nobody's prepared for that. Even if you know it's coming, you're not. You're just not. I've been there many times, so, yeah. I know how that is. Not specifically that level, but... Yeah, even when you know it's going to happen, it's bad. That, I think, definitely may have hit in a huge way and have caused a lot of things um, to kind of, you know, kind of change, kind of cause some some differences there. Um, You are right 100% in the beginning by saying, like, if you have issues like this you should see a professional and that is 100% my recommendation though I know how it is uh, sometimes the people who you know and absolutely are certain need to be seeing you know seeing a professional getting professional help uh, are sometimes the ones who will fight you the hardest and say that no they don't or that you know this is ridiculous or you're just being crazy and yeah, no, it's it's difficult. I, I feel that. I totally feel that. Um, but a lot of this does sound like... A lot of what you're describing that... Kind of goes into what, what you were kind of saying, maybe like weird territory, is a huge crossover with massive depression and substance abuse issues. There's a subreddit, and I'm sure... Most of you have already seen it, um, but it's called, like, uh, Neckbeard Nests, and they specifically, because they have gotten so many submissions to this, they've seen so many things, that you can kind of tell the difference between someone who just doesn't want to do anything, like someone who's just being lazy, and someone who has, like, a mental illness, um, with this, I'm gonna, you know, I'm not a professional, so I'm just kind of speculating on certain things. Uh, with a lot of what you're describing, it sounds a lot like that. Uh, a lot of substance abuse can lead to, you know, you're disorganized, you, you're not focused properly, you can't keep track of certain things, uh, you're kind of in and out because you don't really know, you know, what you're supposed to be doing. And long-term abuse of these kind of things can affect you in a big, bad way. Possibly for, you know, for life, uh, it, it can be a very serious thing. Which is the reason why, like, as someone who's gone through, obviously not quite as severe, but uh, substance issues like that, it's, it's not a thing that just goes away. You, you definitely still feel it. But it gets easier and easier to kind of work around, to kind of control. Um, 
And it's the same thing with my depression. Being surrounded by people who are supportive and helping and doing things has helped out a lot. And I know that doing everything, you know, I, I don't know if your brother uh, lives with you. I, I kind of assumed he did just because of the way it was said, but I could be wrong. Uh, but if so, I know it's difficult on both of you to have to, like, take care of things and, you know, clean, pick up the slack, do all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I get it. You know, I get that it's it's rough, and it can be, you know, disheartening. But it's, it's one of the things that I would honestly encourage you to do. Um, now, her own personal space is going to have to, you know, be her own... Uh, responsibility unless it gets to the point where things are incredibly dangerous um, but you guys should honestly take over for like the rest of the house because you don't deserve to live in a place that is not you know clean and well kept and if you have to do it yourself then you know sometimes you do uh, it's a lot of I would say it's like a lot of things just growing up, but it's also not fair because you're in a house with multiple people and some people should be responsible. So, I get it. Even, you know, I imagine you guys are doing your part. You are doing good to help out and keep things tidy and doing what you can. But it can be frustrating when you're living with somebody who could also be helping you but just isn't. And I understand that. And it's difficult because mental illness is not like a physical illness. You can't see it. In, in the most clear way. So it can be incredibly frustrating. But taking care of each other is honestly a very good thing for you guys to do. And I would encourage um, trying your best to get her to, you know, talk to some people, um, professionals. And I know that's going to be hard. I, I know it is. Because a lot of times when you're in that specific level of depression uh, you don't want to come out like getting out of it is difficult because you're so convinced it's the only way to be and it's easy to slip back into that it's easy to fall into it but you know all I can tell you is to approach the subject gently and do what you can to just you know I guess kind of not just make her aware, but, like, not aware in a sense of, like, you know, you you know, you know, have to do this, but more like, we would want you to do this because we're worried, because we're scared. You know? Like, a lot of, a lot of what happened with my own stuff with depression is, and I, I realize this isn't universal, but a lot of what happened with me is, um, I had to kind of work myself into a position to come out of it because I I have I guess it's a thing with dyslexia. I have a of a thing about like you know logicking out problems. Everything has to be, you know, these are the lines. We do what we can with the lines. And depression does not fit. It's a completely illogical thing. But even though I knew that I would still have trouble getting out of it. And, yeah, it, it does make no sense. It is completely irrational to someone who's never had to deal with it, someone who doesn't have to go through it. And I understand how you feel. It is completely frustrating and irrational, but it's also just kind of how things are. And, and professional help is honestly the best way to go about this because I'm not a professional I can't give you the best advice I can only tell you what helped me and hope that it helps you too uh, a therapist I think would be a good place to start you guys might want to look into that because it really sounds like to me uh, she's got some pretty major unresolved issues and they're eating away at her and talking to someone would help. Talking to someone is a good place to go for this. And I know it's like, you know, then why not talk to us? And it's like sometimes it's hard to talk to the people you care about most 
when you're convinced that the only thing you're good at is being a burden. I had to unlearn that shit after like years of having that reinforced on me so that I could get to a point uh, in my relationship with Sango that I could openly talk about certain things. And even though I know Sango would not do anything to hurt me or anything like that, that's where your mind goes when you're in that place. You feel like you would be a burden or like a, a disappointment or things like that. And I'm positive you wouldn't think that, you know, about, about your mother, but like, that's how your mind goes with depression. It does shit like that to you. And it is rough. And I'm very sorry you're all having to deal with that. But I do kind of advise, you know, talking to a therapist. Not just for her, but, like, for you. Uh, for anybody, really. Therapy's wonderful. It, it can help you with a lot of things. And I 100% think you should. I uh, think you should, you know, give it a shot. Sometimes it helps to just talk it out, you know? I, I don't know how helpful this whole video is. Uh, I do realize it's running kind of long, but I hope that this helped in some way. And uh, I hope things get better, man. I really do. I know it's tough, but, you know, I really do think that if you guys do your best, I think you can do it. I think it'll get better. And that's, it's hard. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's no easy day, but one step at a time and I think you can do it. Either way, know that your Uncle Moonhorse loves you very much. And that goes for all of you guys. I love you all so very much. And uh, I'll see you in the next video, huh? Seriously, take care of yourselves out there. It's, it's a scary world. I worry about you kids. I love you all. Goodbye.